Rocket, the 24-year-old third baseman, Bardell. With Joe Nolan, 26 behind the plate. Jesus steps in. The first pitch is a fat ball for a strike. And the ball game is underway. And an exceptionally young ball club. And, of course, Gary Matthews out on the disabled list. They totally need him. There's a swing by Ivan on a fastball. He's late and fouls it over to the picnic area down the first base line. And the count goes to nothing and two on Ivan. Starts tonight hitting 300 for the year with four runs batted in. Cookie Rojas coaching at first base. Peanut Slavery in the coach's box at third. Wind up in Easterly's. Fits to Ivan. Swung on and a drive into right field. A base hit. Coming over quickly to cut it off is Brian Esselstyn. And Ivan opens up the ball game with an opposite field single on an old 2 pitch. That'll bring up Gene Klein, hitting 2-11. With five runs, got it in the homer. Each of his earned run average for the six innings that he's worked this year is three right in the nose, having given up two earned runs. So, to the big first baseman, Murphy puts the tag on Ivan, sliding back in just in front of it. They list him at 6'4", but I swear he's got to be about 6'7". Very, very trim, about 210 pounds. Pitched by Easterly, breaking ball into the dirt, gets away from the catcher, and Yvonne Jesus is on at second base. As Easterly's breaking ball could not be stopped by Joe Nolan. Give okay. him a stolen base, did he say? Can't be, he wasn't moving. No. Happy to have it. In any case, he's on a second. They do not use a sports writer here as their official score. He's a professor in college here. Now the stretch, the left-hander's pitch. Brian takes it high, fastball, ball one. Down the line, 330 feet. And the fence here is only about seven or eight feet high. It's an open wire fence in front of the solid wall behind it. 330 in right field. There's a swing and a high pop-up. Third baseman, Barry Bondell coming in, and he calls for it and makes the ball. Ryan does not get that guy over to third base. That brings up Dave Kingman. Gippus, I'm sorry, Bobby Mercer, hitting in the third spot, won the ball game at Philadelphia with his first home run of the season. A grand slam job for the first hit of the night by the Cubs. It followed a pair of walks in a big Philadelphia air. The air coming with two men out. So Mercer, instead of having to lead off the next inning, had a chance. Built in three in front of him, and he did. Now he takes the first pitch, a strike fastball right at the knees. Batting 274 for the homer. 12 runs by it in now. Played umpire, Gary Dale, checking out that ball. Remember, if you want to get copies of the cup schedule, pocket size. Send a stamp self-addressed envelope to WGN. Here's a bit. Fastball taken for a strike. 0 2. The address 2501 Bradley Place, Chicago, 60618. Send a stamp self-addressed envelope. We'll be happy then to send you as many schedules as you need. Stretch in the pit. Breaking ball misses inside the Bobby. Ball one, strike two on him. With one out, no score. Comes batting in the top of the second. Straight away center field here is 402 feet. 385 to the power alley. He's to leave next pitch. A fastball swung on. Hit high and deep to right center field. Calling forward is Roland Offer. He is there in front of the one track captain. The Asian tag. He goes to third easily. After the catch, about 380 feet away. They're two bombs to the runner in third, and here is Dave Kingman. It was in his last 11 trips to the plate. Now batting only 179, with a pair of home runs and six runs batted in for the year. Ball well tagged by Bobby. Easterly from the windup, the southpaw's first pitch. High fastball, ball one. Light as lack of size. He is pretty good fastball. He was hit pretty hard in his first outing. Looks at third into Jesus, comes to the plate. Kingman takes. There's a strike on the inside corner to knees. 
Ball one, strike one on Dave. There's 10 hits in his first 56 at bats for the Cubs this year, including a pair of home runs. He shall leave delivers. There's a swing into the Mets as he went after one up in his eyes. Looks like a high slider. Ball one, strike two. Span 17 times in 56 official tips. He looks in at the ball, a little bit low. Pretty good house here tonight. Kind of a college student night. They've let collegians here and perhaps fight tonight. They're going to have a body painting show after the ball game. But they have to be closed. 2-2 two -two pitch. And the swing, and he taps it foul off the hand of the catcher, Joe Nolan. Ray last year was 2-0 oh 
against the Braves. Right hander delivers way outside. Ball three, strike two. And his career in the Bankers, cut right hander, has beaten Atlanta six times, lost four decisions to them. This was not a happy place for the Cubs to visit last year. They lost the season series here in Atlanta to the Braves. A swing and a drive foul. Fastball to him. Goes out of play. At this ballpark, the Cubs won a pair last year and lost four. But they handled Atlanta at Wrigley Field very nicely. Beat them five out of six. Wind up to that fastball, misses inside to a left-handed hitting office, and he becomes the Atlanta Braves' first base runner of the night with a walk. Brian Asselstein, playing in right field, steps in, hitting 318 with a run batted in. Gary Matthews separated a shoulder, making a good catch against the Dodgers out there. And he has been out of action since then, and they don't expect him back for another month. He's on the disabled list, Gary Matthews, and they missed him. Good hitter. First pitch, and it's a ball inside to Appleside. Left-handed hitter. Slightly close stance for him. First, wheels a throw to first base. Kingman playing at first tonight. Back in plenty of time with Roland Office. Noisy and enthusiastic crowd. Another throw to first base. And again, the runner back standing. This infield has always been known as a tough one for infielders. Never been really smooth. There's a delivery that's too low. He looks like he is struggling out there, Lou. Well, he's got a new catcher, Cox, uh, behind the plate. So he might be handling him just a little bit different than what Raider would uh, do. He has struck out 13 this year in his first 31 innings of work as one complete game. That was at New York. A lot toss over to first base. This is his fifth start of the year, and his earned run average is glittering one. 1.45. A lot only five earned runs in his first four starts over 31 innings. Check the runner, delivers. There's a swing and a high bouncing ball. Over Kingman's club into right field. We're going to have runners at first and third. Even though Kingman, very, very tall, jumped to the ball a bit, got the arm up as high as he could, he still couldn't get to it. And Chopper to right field brings up the hottest hitter in the league today, Jeff Burrow. to the plate. This guy has 10 hits. He played only a very fine catch by Larry Herndon, night before last, the Giants center fielder. Prevented Burroughs from making it 11 out of 11. Last night, he was 2 for 2, with a pair of runs batted in. Hitting 386. A couple of homers, 9 runs batted in. Right-hander. Very, very tough spot for the Cubs and for Ray Burris. He delivers a breaking ball that misses outside. No 10 hits. Burroughs has three doubles, two homers, and six runs batted in. He's also walked six times in the last four games. Treat him with care. Respect the pitch. Swung out and a high fly ball deep to right center field. Should be caught by Cruz. The runner at third will pad. He will score easily. The throw into second base. Atlanta leads one to nothing. He's appeared at the plate five times as a pinch hitter without success. A left-hander comes from St. Louis. Going down there. Go to first base. Keep office closed. Have to keep an eye on him. 1-0 Atlanta. Bottom of the first. First is pitch. 
breaking ball to him, and he took a little off of him, and he's way out front and tapped a weak foul. And eventually he will reach that Atlanta dugout way back on the first base side. Cubs get back to Wrigley Field Tuesday, taking on the Dodgers, and then the San Francisco Giants there next week. First is delivery, the runner goes, there's a swing on a hit and run and a high foul back out of play. He went after it at fastball, just about at the knees. Nolan wears what? Another regular route, in addition to Matthews and Polk Rubber, Rod Gilbert got a store shoulder, but he can swing the bat all right, but he can't throw with it. Cubs are playing Nolan to pull. Run him at first, with two gone. Ray turns and lots one over to Kingman at first base. He's back safely. Cubs start this series in Atlanta a half game off the pace of the National League leading well, Eastern Division leading Montreal Expos. Hunter doesn't go. Pitch out called for by Cox. Nothing happening. Ball one, strike two. Pittsburgh also a half game off, but the Pirates, a few percentage points in front of the Cubs. They have been a hot ball club. Pittsburgh has. Phillies a game out, the New York Mets a game and a half, and the Cardinals only two and a half out in the center of the Eastern Division. Runner goes. He takes low and inside. Cox is through. The Aces put the tag on, a hit first wide, and he's out of there to retire the side. Good throw by Larry Cox. Hasselstein caught stealing. No runs, a hit, a walk. Nobody left on. I'm sorry, one run. In the one, Atlanta takes the field. The Braves lead the Cubs one to nothing. Back in Atlanta, out of air. One hit in his last ah! Official tip to the plate. Play for the sore back. Takes the first pitch from East of Asia. Southball misses down low ball one. Steve's batting average is dipped all the way down to 114. He swings and he rolls a foul ball over to the far end of the Cubs dugout, way over behind third base. Ball one, strike one on him. There's no homers this year. Pair of runs batted in. Vince Floyd and Lou Boudreaux reporting. Atlanta jumping out front with a run in the first inning off Ray Burris, and each of these next pitches way high. Ball two, strike one. Steve, of course, the switch hitter, led the ball club last year in hitting. Mark at 299. Each of these pitch takes it high. Ball three, strike one. Hasselstein guards the line in right field against Donna Burris, playing him to swing late. And office is shaded a bit over into right center. Here's the pitch. Takes the breaking ball low and outside for ball four. Again, the Cubs get the leadoff man on. They're keeping everything away to Rodaveros. That brings up Manny Trio, hitting 277 with four runs batted in. Missed a scoring opportunity in the first inning. After the Aces opened with a single, got the second on a wild pitch. Here's a delivery. He swings, fouls it over to the right side, strike one count. And Fines popped up to the third baseman. The Aces had to hold at second. He was able to advance to third on Mercer's high, deep fly ball to center field. That made the second out, and then Kingman ended the inning by panning. Now, runner at first as a result of a walk, nobody out. He said he looks at first, the left hander gets the pitch out, nothing on. Ball one, strike one. A ball came into the stands and hit some young gal in the arm. Being escorted to the first base room. Here's a stretch by Jamie Easterly and the pitch. Real goes after it. Out went up towards the boot. And a little bit shy. Nice festivities. They're holding their first annual World 
championship of body fading after the game. $500 first prize to the winning paint job, male and female entrance. The only rule is that all paintees have to be legally closed. Here's the pitch. Swung on, bouncing ball left side, gets by the third baseman into left field. And out of will have to stop at second on a single barely out of the range of Barry Bunnell, the third baseman. Nobody out. Take advantage of this opportunity. That second hit off young Jamie Easterly. And that brings up Hector Cruz, who is battling a slump, 0 for 11. Six hits in his first 31 trips to the plate. He's hitting 194, looking for his first run batted in in a cup uniform. He has not been striking out. Popping up a lot or hitting liners at somebody. Right-hander takes and easily found the strike zone right at the knees on the inside corner to Hector. In the on-deck circle, Larry Cox, the eighth man of the batting order, to be followed by Ray Burris. Runners at first and second, Atlanta holding a one-to-nothing lead in the second. The pitch missed outside at the knees. All one, strike one. Easterly is ready. Here's the pitch. Big swing by Hector and a high foul back up against tremendously high backstop that they have here. So the count goes to one and two on Hector Cruz. Let it be known very friendly to the press this spring that he preferred to be called Hector, not Katie. That name that was given to him down at St. Louis. He looks and that's very high ball two strike two. The Dodgers in the Western Division open the weekend action with a game and a half lead over Cincinnati. Four over Houston and San Francisco. Here's the pitch. Swung on and a foul ball. Ripped down the third baseline. Whoop. The ball girl down there just as she was about to field it. Slipped and fell right on her fence. But she stopped the ball. Two-two count. Good noisy crowd. They're lagging in attendance from a year ago at this time. Despite the best, best efforts of the front office, headed up by Ted Turner. Here's the delivery. Swung out and a high fly ball. Shallow left field going out. Two men coming in one, and it's grabbed one-handed by the shortstop, 24-year-old Pat Rocket. He ran a country mile. Who'd have yeah. that one? Burroughs, uh, sort of... Uh, Short leg at the youngster that time. He was calling for the shortstop all the way, and Rocket made a very fine catch. Sure did. Way out there in left field. And a one handed grab hit high. Good play. Runners, of course, holding at first and second. Takes a little of the pressure off easily, but not all of it. Larry Cox. Batting right at it, wide stance at the plate. One for five for the Cubs so far this year. Caught the other night at Philadelphia. This was his second consecutive start for the Cubs. And he looks at that one a little bit low, ball one. Easterly checks the runners, delivers a swing and a double play ball to the shortstop. Over to second for one here is Royster's bag and they get the double play. Rocket to Royster. To the big rookie first baseman, Dale Murphy. Their 11th double play of the season. Lead off single in the first inning resulted in nothing. A walk and a lead off single here. And another goose egg in the run department for the Cubs. With one man left on again at the end of one and a half. Atlanta coming to bat. The Braves won the Cubs nothing. Gil Nolan, the catcher, was in the batter's box in the first inning when Brian Esselstein took off for second base, and Larry Cox nailed him with a throw to Yvonne De Jesus. So Nolan will lead off here in the second. He'll be followed by the big rookie first baseman, Dale Murphy, and then the third baseman, Barry Bonnell. That's running into the same problems here that they had in Philadelphia, getting some runs on the board. Matter of fact, it's been a problem that's played them in this early going in this season. Start tonight with a team batting average at 237, only six homers. 
50 runs batted in. For that position, 14 homers and 67 runs batted in, including here tonight. Nolan, left-hander. He tries to bunt one, and he fouls it over to the third base side. He had seen that Onavarius was not playing up in the edge of the grass for him at third and thought he could drop one down there and get away with a bunt single. Big rookie, Dale Murphy, in the on-deck circle. Scott say that Murphy may be their best catcher. Wind up in the pitch. Swung on, let up. Bounces it down to King with a one hop, and that's an easy out for Big Dave. Well, it seems to me that's a big change in Burris this year. His effectiveness with that change up there. I've got to give Mike Roy, a uh, pitching coach, a lot of credit. He worked all spring on that particular pitch. Now, tall 22-year-old Dale Murphy, and he just turned 22. They show him at 6'4", but he looks more like about 6'6 or 6'7". Coward over Willie McCovey last night of the Giants. The rangy kid. Looked at the first pitch and it's a strike. He got up to a very slow start. Still hitting only 183, but he's been hitting pretty well in the last few ball games. There's a homer and seven runs batted in. Here's the pitch to him. Big swing and a foul came back with the umpire. Got to say this kid. the death certainty for real stardom. Dale Murphy. Going out to Portland, Oregon. Burris in the windup. The swing and a miss on a breaking ball away and a big fellow strikes out. He has fanned a lot this year. That's his 18th. Strikeout. 61 trips to the plate. Base is empty. Two gone in the second inning. The major cheers go up. For Barry Bunnell. Playing at third base tonight. Daryl Taney was there last night. I got the Giants. Bunnell hitting 207 with three runs batted in. Early wide stance for him. The right hander takes. Burris just missed the corner away. Oh, these kids are noisy. That's good. I like to see that enthusiasm. First wide. Next blow with a fastball. Hudo. The Oakland finally lost another ball game. Had their streak ended, but they still lead the Western Division of the American League by two over Kansas City. That's the ball. Blowing away, ball three. Matt Rocket, the shortstop, due up next. California also two games out. Frank Canetta becomes the first pitcher in the majors to post five wins this year. Frank Canetta, California, threw a full hitter for him last night. That's a strike at the letters. And the White Sox, study. their home stand tonight, six and a half away. And there is ball four outside, and that's the second walk issued by Ray. The first one went to roll an office with one out in the first inning, and it blossomed into a run. Rocket, the shortstop, stepping in. He's been having a tough go of it at the plate. Five for 49. He's sporting a very low average of 102. He's driven in two runs, a right-hander. That Rocket started the double play that ended the tough second inning. He swings the first pitch, bouncing ball down to Bears. Comes in and gets it, throws to Kingman. Took it on a pretty tricky hop. That retires the side with no damage done in the second inning. One walk, one man left on, no hits. At the end of two in Atlanta, the Cubs come to bat and Burris is to lead off for the score. Atlanta one of the Cubs, nothing. We entertain the Eastern Division uh, opponent, all the Orioles, off to a slow start, 5 and 11. Sox, his three wins to move up to the 500 mark. Here at Atlanta with a 1 to nothing lead. Vince Lloyd, and here is Lou Boudreau. Lou. Thank you, Vince. The number nine man in the Cubs batting order will open it up and then followed by the leadoff man and uh, then the second place hitter. The Cubs, with two scoring opportunities in the first and second, failed to score. Kynes did not move 
to Jesus over to third when he was on second after singling with a count of two strikes on him and then went to second on a wild pitch. Clines popped up. Then the long fly ball by Mercer could have scored the man. But we didn't score. One and one to count. Then when Ontiveros walked and Trio singled, double play ended the Cubs' threat in the second inning. Braves lead. One to nothing. Next pitch is into the dirt. Ball two, strike one. Easterly has only pitched six innings prior to the tonight's start. Little softball into the windup. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. So now the count is two and two. Easterly has been throwing good fastballs for the better portion of the first two innings. Two and two pitch. Strike three on a swing. And that is the second strikeout by Easterly. Now the top of the order to Jesus, who singles to open up this ball game. And Jesus, hitting just a little over 300 now, steps in the batter's box. Atlanta with one run, one hit. Chicago, no runs on two hits. First pitch is a strike call, a slider over the inside corner. All in one to count. Nobody on base. Braves play to Jesus straight away. There's a fastball for a strike, and Jesus didn't like the call. He thought it was inside. Oh, and two. Well, this was the same count on him when he singled to right in the first inning. Oh, and two pitch. Outside and high. He wasted that one. Now it's one and two. Well, they all at third tonight. Rocket at short, Royster at second, Murphy at first. <laughs> he has it. Fires to Murphy for the out. I have never heard a manager use an opposition as Bobby Cox plays young Ozzie Smith, the shortstop for San Diego. He says that he's one of the finest fielding shortstops that he has ever seen, which is quite a compliment. So we're anxious to see that shortstop with San Diego. Just a graduated last year from Cal Poly in California. First pitch to Klein, strike. He said he can do everything and do it well. He was in the instructional league starting out last year. Swing a chopper down to the shortstop. Rocket has it, fires the first with a great arm. Retires Klein. The Cubs go down one, two, three. No runs, no hits. Nobody left on base in the top of the third inning. Atlanta coming to bat. Atlanta won. The Cubs nothing. In the third inning, Easterly will lead off for Atlanta, followed by Royster and then Office. In the first inning, after Royster flied out to Cruz in the field, and then on the hit and run, Hasseltine pulled that ball over Kingman's head in the right field, sending Office to third, where he scored on a sacrifice fly by Burroughs. Thus far, that's been all the scoring, and we're just in the bottom of the third inning. Easterly bats left-handed as he pitches. He swings and pops up the first pitch over on the Bears is dead at third. He's there. He has it. One out. One pitch. One out. Now here's Royster. Braves are very keen on their double play combination of two youngsters. Royster and Rocket. Bobby Cox says, They've mentioned that the improvement of Royster puts him right among the top second basemen in the National League. Right now, Royster, the shortstop, or I should say, second baseman at that. Swing and a ground ball through the middle. 
The Hastings has it behind second. Fires the king and pulls him off the bat. Royster is safe. That's an infield hit for Royster. Atlanta now with two hits. And you've got to keep an eye on this youngster. He has nine stolen bases. He has nine team stolen bases by the entire Braves team. He's on first, one out. Office, the hitter, a left-handed hitter, which gives him the advantage. He has a fine lead at first. There he goes, and then he stops as that pitch gets inside to office ball one. He has that fake lead as if he's going to attempt to steal a second. Then he stops quickly and picks up that baseball head as it is caught by the catcher and returns to first base. Ball one. Here's the pitch. There he goes. Swing a ground ball base hit. It's run. And once again, it's been successful for the Braves. They have runners on first and third. One out. Office pulled that ball in the hole between Kingman and Trio. And with Royster on the way, he advances to third very easily. Braves now have three hits. Now, here's Asseltine, the hitter. He singled in the first inning. Left-handed hitter. As Tommy Cox has put a lot of left-handers against the Cubs right-hander tonight. Braves lead one and nothing, and they're threatening to add to, to that lead here in the third inning. Royster with a lead off third, office off first. First pitch to Asseltine, he takes outside, ball one. Cubs infield playing back for a double play. All except Acaparis, who is even with the bag at third. And Kingman is holding the runner on his first. Now the ball one pitch on its way. Could have ball inside ball two. Asselkind looking over every pitch. Looks down to Burgess, gets his side. Royster's on third, office on first, one out. The stretch. And here's the pitch. That ball swing, a ground ball, a trio. He has it. He goes to second for one. He's safe at second. The ball gets away from the first base for Kingman. And the runners advance. Here comes the runner to the plate. Here's the throw to Cox. He drops the plate. The ball gets away from him. Wasn't it scored? Now here comes Asselstein. Here's the throw to Ferreira. He's out of the plate. A two-run score. A ground ball, the trio's left.
Give the Cubs 16. Two out. Nobody on base. Ball three. No strike. The pitch on its way. There's a strike called and it's three and one. They tell you, looked like a hot potato there for about a minute and a half. That little round nugget wasn't being caught by many cups. Strike two on a good fastball, and now it's three and two. On Burris, who has one out of the eye tonight, his tenth with that sacrifice fly to Cruz in the first inning. The three and two pitch on a play. Outside, ball four. Three walks given to Atlanta tonight thus far. And now here's young catcher Nolan at bat. Johnny Moore throwing in the cup bullpen. Warming up, and he's ready. Burroughs on first, Kingman playing behind him because of the left-handed hitter. First pitch to Nolan. Outside, ball one. Time is called. Cox jogs out to the mound for a few words. Let's pause by seconds for station identification. This is the WTN, Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. And this is WGN Radio Chicago. Third inning with the Braves leading three to nothing. The pitch. Kick this swing, but the ball nips the corner. One and one to count. end of the bat, levels it over the plate. The one and one pitch, swing and a fly ball to center field, Cruz is there, right in its track, he gloves it one-handed for the out. But in the third inning, the Braves come up with two gifts. Two runs, two hits, two errors, one man left on base. At the end of three, Atlanta three, comes something. You know, command, friendly... In the fourth inning, the Cubs will send Mercer, Kingman, and Octavera to the plate. Mercer, in the first inning, sent Office back deep in the right center for his fly ball for the second out in the inning. It was so deep that the Jesus, who was on second, advanced to third. Steps in the batter's box. Easterly, the southpaw, gets the sign. Wind up, first pitch to Bobby. Fastball for a strike call over the outside corner. Cubs were set down in the third inning. One, two, three. Here's a swing and a foul. Back out of play. Over the Cubs dugout. Lee has jumped out in front. 0-2 on Bobby Mercer. It's 3.30 down each line. The fence is only six feet high. The pitch on its way. Swing and a tap foul. It's much easier, in my opinion, to hit home runs here than in Wrigley Field. Only the wind at Wrigley Field when it's blowing out makes it much different. Of course, in the power alleys, it's 385 here, where it's 368 at Wrigley Field. 402 to straightaway center field. Swing a ground ball with the pitcher's head, second base from behind second. Has it. Fires the Murphy for the out. Those two kids that scored in second have played on. Mercer grounds out to Royster. And now here's Kingman at bat, who struck out in the first inning. Now the catcher, Nolan, going out to talk to Easterly. We're all set to go now. Braves lead, three to nothing. We're in the fourth inning. 
The left hander into the windup, first pitch. Swing and a miss by Caitlin, strike one. Barnell, very deep at third, as is Rocket, the shortstop. Swing and a tap foul. 0 oh, and 2, so easterly here to Mercer, who he retired on a ground out to the second baseman. And now Kingman has the count of 0 and 2. He's been throwing strikes. The 0 and 2 pitch on its way. Swing and a ground ball. Pass the third baseman down the left field line. It could be extra bases. Kingman rounds first. He's going for two, and he has it easily. So Kingman picks up his second double of the year. And that is the third hit by a Cub off easily. So let's see if Ontiveros can pick up a run. Ontiveros walked his first time at bat. Easterly has had at least one base runner in three out of the four innings. But the Cubs having trouble getting that plate. First pitch, high outside, ball one. Cubs will be here tomorrow night and Sunday afternoon. Then return to Wrigley Field. Take on the Dodgers Tuesday. Group sales will handle all the details. So if you know at least 20 people who enjoy fresh air, sunshine, great baseball excitement, call EB71919. The pitch down to Barrett. Low into the dirt, taken nicely by Nolan. The count, ball two, strike one. At telephone number EB71919, have a great party without the fuss at Wrigley Field. Message furnished by the Chicago Cubs. Ball two, strike one. Ontiveros, Kingman with a short lead at second base. The pitch. Ontiveros swings and fouls that ball out of play. Down the right field line. Great, great, leaping one-handed catch by one of the customers. See how easy it is to catch that ball without a glove. Might be minus a finger or two, but he's got the baseball. The pitch. Curveball popped up foul again. Back of the Braves dugout. This is an indication that Easterly, Easterly is still a little quick with that fastball. As a right-handed hitter is fouling it down the right field line. He's into the stretch. The ball two, strike two pitch. Fastball, he checks the swing inside. It was high, but now it's three and two. Trio to up next. Cubs are due to break loose. Three and two pitch. Swing a line drive foul down the right field line. Into the picnic area. Bounces around down there for two or three minutes. The count remains three and two. Graves out in front, three to nothing. After Mercer grounded out to the second baseman, Kingman double. He's at second base. Once again, the three and two pitch. Swing a line drive foul down the right field line. Those two line drives down the right field line foul, only about 10 yards apart. Dolan gives out the sign. He's fully into the stretch. Here's the pitch. Swing and a one hopper right to the second base, but he has it. Fires to Murphy for the out. So Ontiveros getting good wood on that ball. Gets it directly to Royster at second base and is thrown out. Kingman advances to third. So here's Manny Trio who singled in between Bonnell, the third baseman, and Rocket, the shortstop, in the second inning. In the outfield for the Braves, Burroughs in left, office with the speed is in center, and Appletine is in right. Two out, Kingman at third. Trio the hitter. First pitch on its way. Fastball and a swing and a miss. That one was low, below the knees. Strike one. Came 
Newman with a walking lead at third, and he stops as Easterly gives him a glance. Now Easterly steps back off the pitching rubber, wants another sign given to him by his catcher, Nolan. Braves have a lot of young names. They're rebuilding. Swing and a ground ball to the shortstop right. He has it. He fires to Murphy. The stretch. Trio is out. A very fine play by Rockett at North. Moves to his right. And his back foot was on the outfield grab when he made the play to Murphy to retire Trio. So in the fourth inning, the double goes weak. No run. One hit. And one man left on base. At the end of three and a half innings to play, Atlanta three, Chicago nothing. Well, it takes them a little time here to correct scoring. In the third inning, as we go back to the third inning, on the ground ball, a trio off of Aspeltine's bat. He gets an RBI, trio gets an assist. Here's the first pitch to Murphy, strike call. And to Jesus, coming off the bag too quickly, is charged with an air. He's charged with a second air on his wild throw that got past Kingman. And then Kingman, picking up the ball, throws wildly to Cox, and he's charged with an air. So charged the Cubs with three errors in the third inning. One and one to count now on Murphy. One RBI for Asselkind, and one assist for Manny Trio. That brings you up to date. One and one pitch now to Murphy. Swing and he throws his bat to the shortstop. That was a slider away from him and he threw his bat past the cup pitcher that goes all the way to Jesus. Atlanta bat boy gets that bat. Returns it to Murphy. Great whip action with that. With the bat, that is, but it didn't make any contact with that baseball. One ball, two strikes. Murphy leading off the fourth inning. Braves lead three to nothing. Murphy, a tall, right-handed hitter. One and two pitch. Outside. Two and two to come. Murphy with seven RBIs, second to Burroughs, who has ten. The ball, two, strike two pitch. Swing and a pop-up over Kingman's head in foul territory. He's there, the play's dug out, he comes at one-handed for the out. Murphy pops out in foul territory to Kingman. One out. Here's Bunnell. He walked in the second inning. One of the three walks given to Atlanta thus far. Bunnell is a right-handed hitter. First pitch on its way. Fast ball for a strike call. Braves have three runs, three hits. Cubs have no runs, three hits. The Cubs have been charged with three errors. Swing and a ground ball at the Hayes. He has it. Straightens up, fires to Kingman. Two out. Two away, and now here's Rocket, the young shortstop. Rocket rounded out to Antonis to close out the second inning. So he has a chance here to close out the fourth. He's batting eight in manager Bobby Cox's lineup. Takes the punt on the first six and takes it outside. Ball one. Cubs play rocket straight away. He does try to punt the next pitch and fouls it off of the arm of the plate umpire, Jerry Dale. to Woody Simon against the knuckleball artist Phil Negro tomorrow night. One and one pitch. 
swing and a foul off the glove of the catcher, Cox. One ball, two strikes. Two outs, nobody on base. Four is hitting. Monteveras moves back at third. One and two pitch. Fastball inside, and it's two and two. I believe this has to be one of the better crowds that Atlanta has played before. Here's a swing and a miss, and Rocket strikes out. So in the fourth inning, Braves go down one, two, three, no runs, no hits. Nobody left on base. And now with the Braves coming to bat, or I should say the Cubs coming to bat, in the fifth inning, it's the Braves three, Cubs nothing. You know, there's one kind of ball player a manager really likes to have around. That's a guy who's consistent. He's there every day making the plays and getting the hits. Well, that's the kind of consistency that you get with Hylam and Old Style Beer. You always know you're going to get the same great flavor from bottle to bottle, can to can, case in and case out. And the reason? Well, the folks at G. Hylam Brewing Company are consistently fussy about what goes into this great light beer. They select only the choicest hops and the finest grains. They believe only sparkling pure Wisconsin spring water is good enough for Old Style. Water that flows from deep beneath the ground. Some folks say all the way from Canada. And when it comes to brewing, they still brew Old Style the old world way. In fact, Old Style is one American premium beer that is still fully coisoned, naturally carbonated in the old world way. Which means it's pure brewed, double brewed. So next time, try the beer that tastes great consistently. Try Old Style. Pure brewed in God's country. Hector Cruz to lead off for the Cubs. We move into the fifth inning here at Atlanta. He'll be followed by Larry Cox and then Ray Burris. Unless Norman Franks wants to go to the bench. Then Floyd back with a year at Atlanta. That's guilty of three errors and another one of those weird plays on this road trip. First one, of course, occurred the other night at Philadelphia. Western Union has reported that Dave Parker had a two-run homer in the first inning of the count John Montefusco. That would give Parker five for the year. And that Jack Clark also homered in that first inning with the bases empty. And Bill Matlock in the top of the first inning for the Giants, his second of the year. He hit his first one here at Atlanta a couple nights ago. And if they are correct in that one, it would mean Pittsburgh is out in front three to two after one inning of play. We'll wait and see because they report something else in the way of the scores that obviously don't agree with the homers. Cruz takes that one, a strike over the outside corner. Ball one, strike one on him. 0 for 1 tonight. Hitless in his last 12 trips to the plate. Each of these fastballs swung on, and there's one hit high and deep to left field. It's got a chance. It is a home run. Hector Cruz. Brings it out for the first time in a Chicago Cup uniform to make the score. Atlanta, three of the Cubs, one. Well, he comes out of the 0 for 12 slump with a homer. First for the Cubs and his first run about it in. Maybe he'll go on a bench. Lofted it over the left field fence over the head of Jeff Burroughs. That's a good way to start an inning. And now here is Larry Cox, who hit into a double play in the second that retired the side. And the first pitch from Easterly is a ball into the dirt. Goes over to Ray Burris. Dave Brader, the good catcher, regular catcher, I should say, a hard shot from Tim McCarver unnecessarily the other night in Philadelphia. There's a swing and a bouncing ball for the shortstop. Cox then gets it on a tough hop, throws on the run. And that retires Larry Cox. Pat Rocket, 24-year-old shortstop, having to charge in behind the pitcher's mound to club that one. Ray struck out, leading off the third. He's a pretty good hitting pitcher. San Diego and Philadelphia scored us tonight in the bottom of the second inning at Philly. Bob Ochinko for the Padres against Larry Christensen. Cincinnati leading the Mets 1-0 in the second inning. Freddie Norman against Gary Kuzman. The battle of lefties. Norman 2-0 for the Reds. Wind up by Usually Burris. Swings and a ground ball. Off the mound to the shortstop again. He's going to be out and he is. Well, 
handled that by the pitcher, but not by Mr. Rocker. That brings up the Jesus, who's single in the first inning. Got the second on the wild pitch, but had to hold his clients. Popped up to third. Danny Bond was able to advance to third base on Mercer's deep fly ball to center field, but that was the second out of the inning, and it ended with Kingman's strikeout. Montreal later tonight at Houston and down at St. Louis tonight. The Western Division leading Los Angeles Dodgers have Rick Roden 2-0 against Bob Bush, who is 3-1, including a no-hitter for the Cardinals. There's a swing and a foul back up towards our boot, but it drops into the seats below. Strike one count on Ivan. One for two tonight. They now show him hitting 306 for the season. Got the uh, Steve Stone going against Baltimore's Dennis Martinez in Chicago tonight. He tries the bunt. He gets a good one on the third base side. Here's the pickup on the plate, and he is safe at first base. Fine play by Barry Bonnell. Did everything he could. Billy Cox is coming out to beat for that call by John McSherry, the first base umpire. Just wanted to let him know he didn't like it. He knows he's not going to get a team. Bond's good speed, and he had to go hard all the way. A good stretch made by a very tall rookie first baseman. Devon is on with an infield hit. At number five for the Cubs, three to one Atlanta. And in the batter's box is Gene Klein's, who's 0 for 2 tonight. The stretch to pitch. They call for the pitch out. Devon was not going. Five years of age in the hill. Little guy. Kicks delivered. Fastball swung on and a ground ball to the second baseman. Has it on the second hop. Royster's back over the first. And the fifth inning for the cup. Oh, that a lot of ground balls off this guy. One run on Hector Cruz. First home run of the season for the Cubs. Two hits in the inning. A man left on. And the Braves come to bat. Bottom of inning number five will find the pitcher leading off of the score at Lata three. The Cubs won. For the first period, San Antonio Spurs trying to come back against the Washington Redskins. Lead by four points, 29-25. Washington bullets for sorry. Victor says San Francisco and Pittsburgh are tied two to two at the end of two innings of play. Boston did not score. Texas in the top of the first inning. The Rangers down bad. And here's a swing and a drive to Cruz in center. Hector reaches up. He clubs it. And he's today getting good one of the ball lines out. That brings up Royster. Wide out to Hector in the first inning and then got an infield hit in the third. On the hit and run, he advanced over to a third base on Roland Officer's base hit and came in on the fielder's choice off the bat of Ryan Esselstein. That was swallowed by a couple of errors. Three errors, as a matter of fact. Yankees did not score at Minnesota at the top of the first. Here's the pitch. Right-hander is swinging and a miss and a ball breaking away from him. Padres and the Phillies called us after two innings of play tonight at Philadelphia. Burris gets his sign from Larry Cox, the right-hander's pitch. Just missed inside. Was your right-hander. They show him now hitting 310 with six points on with a single in the third. Here's the wind up the pitch. Strike call, a pass ball away from him at the letters. He steps out of the batter's box for a few moments. Not to make the leaf uh, mud out of his spike. Now the right-hander settles back in. First, gets his side. Ray steps back, starts the wind up. Here's the pitch. Third, that he missed blow and away. Ball two, strike two. On the leadoff hitter tonight for Atlanta, M. Jerry Royster. Just tallied one of their three runs. Here's the wind-up 2-2 delivery. Half swing, and he tops one. Leo charging in the glass, and he gets it in front of the back at second and makes a play on a very, very close one. 
Alex, who has great, great speed, almost makes it out. Gary gets the cups of call on that one. Ball tapped over the mound. Base is empty for the left-handed hitting Roland Office, who walked and scored in the first, singled and scored on one of three errors in the third inning. Officially, he's one for one. Right away stance for a left-hander. Kicks his way at the strike right at the knees, and he can't believe that call by Gary Dale. Gets out for a few moments. Where's number 22? Well, we won't be back down here in Atlanta until the end of August. Come down early and back late. Wind up at the strike one pitch. Swung on a hard shot. Turns up. The pitcher picked up by the Hastings, and he'll have no play at first base as he wound up on the outfield grass on the second base side. That will be a hard single. This guy is off for the third time tonight. The Chicago Bulls trainer was on this trip with the Cubs is coming out to check the Cubs pitcher. Augustine is here because the Cubs regular trainer, Tony Garoppolo, the wife was very, very pregnant down at their home in St. Louis. Well overdue with the baby. Tony was given permission to go down there and be with her. He also had the misfortune. The Cubs were at home. Had their home broken into while he was out doing some shopping. And the burglar or burglars made away with, with studio equipment, television set, radios, and a whole flock of other things. That was the fact that it's overdue with the pregnancy. Makes things very, very tense in the Garoppolo household. And Rob Burr says he's okay. Makes a lot toss to first base. Keep off his close. The left-hander hitting Brian Esselstein. The right field design. But it for a run batted in on that third inning with a fielder's choice. Matty Creel. Due to second base, the Jesus came off the back too early. The runner there was safe. Then he made a fourth four throw over to first base. Was his second error on that play. Dave Kingman throw in towards the plate when he finally retrieved the ball. Was a poor one. So Dave was charged with an error. All in all, it was not a very happy half minute or so for the Cubs. Pitch was a ball too low. There's a swing on a let up. He's way out front, almost hits deep Ward, coaching at first base. Ball one, strike one on Asselstein. Gary Matthews figures to be a big help to this ball club. Separated, uh, suffered a shoulder separation, making a catch against the Dodgers out there early in the season. Now, the stretch in the 1-1 delivery coming up. Hit it with a close stance versus delivery. Swung out and a drive in the center field. Cruz, they're picking up on the first half. They have runners at first and second on a line single. After that, a fine Esselstein. He's two for three. With two away, Burris has his work cut out for him. Jeff Burroughs, the batter. Before Burroughs stepped in, let's pause here for station identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cup Baseball Network. And this is WGN Radio Chicago. Burroughs last year hit 41 homers for this ball club. His first season with them after they got him from the Texas Rangers. Drove in a run in the first inning with a deep sacrifice fly, and he walked in the third when Burris pitched around him. you got to be careful with him. When come into the fastball, you better jam him with it. It's a breaking step away. Up right-handed hitter, leading the National League tonight with a box of 386, first pitch. Did throw the breaking ball away, and it caught the outside corner for a strike. Burris with a couple of homers and 10 runs batted in. He's the 27. He's the oldest member of the Atlanta Braves cast in the field right now. Talk about a young ball club. They've really got it here. Double look at second by Burris. By Burris. Here's the pitch. Swung out and a high foul that's going to be out of play behind the Atlanta dugout of the first base side. Into a 
Marshall collision and it around and finally one eager young kid grabs it. Score Atlanta three, the Cubs one. Braves runners at first and second. Jeff Burroughs in the batter's box. Ten hits in his last 11 official trips to the plate. Was two for two against San Francisco here last night. And drove in a pair of runs. But they lost that ball. Ray has to be careful. 0-2 delivery. Here it is. He waits the fastball inside of the letters. Ball one, strike two. to Jeff Burroughs. Ray Dunn to keep this guy from hurting him right here. With runners at first and second, two gone, bottom of inning number five. Here's the switch. Right into a long look at second. Now the delivery's way inside for that fastball at the belt, forcing back out of the batter's spot. I think the American League hitting started tonight with a mark of 422. Cleveland, Buddy Bell. Rodriguez to Detroit. Next to 417. Rod Carew, Minnesota, 385. Baylor in Toronto, 379. Porter of Kansas City, the same. 2 2 pitch. Swung on. One hopper into the glove of play. That pitcher feels it, throws over to Kingman. And he gets Burroughs on the breaking pitch away to retire the side. No runs, two hits. Atlanta leads, two men on. Each team with five hits. But the score at the end of five, Atlanta three in the cup one. Nothing, nothing at the end of one in the ball game at Texas with the Red Sox and the Rangers. Very key off for Boston against Humbarger. All right, Bobby Mercer to lead off against Jamie Easterly. Left-hander winds, first pitch swung on, he's what, what? Knocked down by the second baseman, but it turns into center field, and Mercer on, he's going to try for two, and it is dropped down there by the center field, and rolled off as he picked it up and knocked the arm to throw, startled to see Mercer, hitting at a second base, he drops it, it is a single and an error against the Atlanta Braves center fielder, the Cubs have a runner in scoring position, good base running by the veteran Mercer. up Dave Kingman, doubles inside the left field line with one away in the fourth inning. Could use one of Sky King's tremendous homers right here to tie up this ball game. Easterly, fearful of that, throws one hide away from ball one. He fanned Kingman in the first inning. But he ended his drop at the plate at 12 with that double his last time up, and there's the ball again too high and away. Joe Nolan, 26 year old catcher, goes out. You talk to young Jamie Easterly, and Billy Cox, the skipper, wants to be in on this conversation. First year here for Cox. With the right hander to left hander throwing down in the bullpen. Mickey Mailer, a lucky, and Rick Camp, a right hander. Jamie fired to the right, made one start this year, worked only six innings, given up ten hits. Not back in the dugout. And a ball two, no strike count on King Kong. Right of it second. With the right hander to left hander throwing down to the bullpen. Mickey Miller. A lefty and Rick Camp a right hander. Jamie fired to the night, made one start this year, worked only six innings, given up ten hits. Not back in the dugout. And a ball two, no strike count on King Kong. Right of it second. Here's the pitch. Swing out of there. Boy, what a second. Strike one. 
Get a hold of one. Here's the stretch. He's to be six. Run out of his. He came upstairs with a fastball. Looked like it was in Dave's eyes. Now the count is two and two on him, and he's stepped out of the batter's box. He and 10 or 11 other Cubs were the guests of Dave Nijowski. Mr. Murray had a Canterbury golf club yesterday on their day off. It's a wicked drive. If he can hit a wicked pitch here. That one is too high, and he laid off three and two. King Kong's only problem with those drives is they have a tendency to leave the golf course. I'd have to say Bobby Mercer is the best golfer in the ball club. And he's a darn good one. He's the runner at second, too. 3-2 pitch. He's got a piece of that one. But a breaking ball down and away. He rolls it down to the third base coach, Mina Trauma. He lets it go by him. So the count stays. Ball three. Strike two on Dave. A couple of homers this year. Driven in six runs. A double in the fourth inning, but he's batting every dip a little bit. It's now at 190. And a trouble guy. But he likes playing at first base. The stretch by Jamie Easterly, the kick to pitch to Kingman. Swung on, he's out in front of that one. He ripped one deep, but foul all the way. Who did he hammer? He is so quick. Tremendous shot. Way, way fouled on the left field side. Got to give Mr. Easterly a little bit of a scare. Now to three and two. He stretched the pitch, a swing, and a miss. Came up to him with another good fastball, and he is standing for out number one in the sixth inning. Third strikeout in twice. Kingman has been his victim. Now Steve Onavares, who's walked and grounded out, steps in. Still 3-1 to one Atlanta. And Easterly, still with a good fastball. A lot of times it's been sinking. Must have been hitting it right into the dirt to the infielders. Creaseway. Then he bounces one foul over near the cut dugout. San Diego and Philly in the fourth inning, no score. Montreal to Houston tonight, Ross Brimley. You cover to the Orioles staff against Joe Necro. One pitch. Half swing and he taps one down the first base line. Murphy has it behind the bag in fair territory. Big fella comes up the line for an unassisted front out with two away. Mercer's on at third. Out of air, did not want to go after that one. But unfortunately for him, his bat made enough contact in front of the plate to tap off weakly the first. That brings up Manny Trio. Joe Necro's brother, Phil, the veteran knuckleballer, the gray beard of this ball club. Slated to be their starting pitcher here tomorrow night against the Cubs Graveyard, Woody Freeman. First six, three of eight. Breaking ball almost into the dirt. Blocked by catcher Joe Nolan. Next weekend, the Cubs will be at Wrigley Field against the San Francisco Giants, and it's going to be jacket giveaway weekend, May 6th and 7th, next Saturday and Sunday. You're 13 and under, you take home a nifty cup. Final windbreaker, complete for the Cubs up. Goes another one into the dirt, and Nola does a remarkable job of stopping that one to prevent Mercer from coming up the line for third. Now it's 2-0 on trio. To qualify for a free jacket next Saturday or Sunday at Wrigley Field, you must be among the first 15,000 youngsters, 13 or younger, with fully paid admission. Bleach your tickets not included. The kids ask the folks to take you out to the ballpark. Jacket giveaway weekend, Saturday and Sunday, May 6th and 7th. Message furnished by the Chicago Cubs. Let's see if Theo can furnish a base hit here. 2-0 delivery to Manny. Takes one that just missed outside, above the knees. Ball three, no strikes. They're not giving him much to swing at here. In the on-deck circle is Hector Cruz, who led off the fifth inning with his first Cub home run. First to a third, two away, 3-0 pitch, he'll take. Drag, breaking ball on the inside corner. Usually may have been given the better of that call. Cubs tonight, one game over the 500 mark. Start the action. In third place, a half game off the pace of Montreal, the National League East. 
21 pitch. Swung out and missed. With the cut of one around his knees to run the cop full to three and two. And he steps out, gets some dirt in his hands. Right hander at the moment hitting 286. Rush to third with two away. 3 1 Atlanta leading. Easterly in the windup. Here it is. Swung out. Ryder. Caught for the foot stop. Pop rocket. Find his leap out. Delivered me perfectly. Rob clear on the hit. And strands quick return. Beautiful play by 24 year old Pat Rocket. Atlanta Braves short stop. There. No runs. One hit. One Atlanta air. One man left on. We move to the bottom of inning number six. At Atlanta, the score is still the Braves. Three, the Cups won. Next time you have an appetite for fine German food, so will everyone else. put the Cubs down in order. The only run so far, a home run off to that of Hector Cruz. Catcher Joe Nolan. Replacing their regular Biff Pocaroba. Behind the plate tonight will read off. He's grounded out. That's when he let off the second inning against Burris, and he flied out to Cruz in center in that third inning, and that retired the side. Hits the Cubs with six. First pitch, and he swings and misses at first. Jambi with it. Dennis Lamp is scheduled to go here on Sunday for the Cubs to conclude this road trip. Nothing and one the count. Let's hand it at the plate. Here's the pitch to him. Let's up on it. A liner ride into the midsection and glove of Kingman at first base. So Nolan is out. Burris beats him that changeup. That brings up the towering rookie Dale Murphy. He has fanned and fouled out to Kingman. Guy about 6 7. Looks like he is anyway. Maybe only 6 5 or 6, but he is tall and lean. He looks at the first pitch of strike on the inside corner. take away the error tried to uh, Roland office in the sixth inning when Mercer hit a shot that caromed off the second baseman out to center field there's a swing by Murphy and a drive into right field Mercer coming in there's there two gone bases are empty office retrieved the ball in shallow center field looks startled to see Mercer sprinting for a second Knocked his arm to throw, but dropped the ball. Say, no, they're not going to charge him with an error. Just give Bobby a double. That's all right. Unfortunately, however, even though it led off the sixth inning, nobody was able to bring Bobby in. It's Barry Bunnell, the right-handed hitting third baseman tonight for Atlanta. Looks at the first pitch of strike over the outside corner to him. Bunnell has walked and grounded out. He's now at 2 3 for the season. Looks at a fastball low and inside. Bill Negro scheduled to go here tomorrow night. Won his last outing after dropping his first four. There's a swing and a foul out of play. Woody Freeman lost his last start for his only decision in a cut uniform. Ready to go for the Cubs. Bittner still battling a bit of a fur butt. Buckner, of course, still out with a bad ankle. One, two pitch. He's out in front of that chain. Drills it foul. Down in the area to cut bullpen. Jack Bloomfield. Go to the spectacular. Goes after that one, a drive into center field. Cruz coming over to cut it off. A single. That 
Cubs there, six hit, the same number the Cubs have. And it brings up Brian Young shortstop, Pat Rocket. Grounded out to Otto Bears, and Burris struck out Rocket to retire Atlanta in the fourth inning. Burris into the strike. Kingman holding the runner out of first, he goes. Here's the pitch, here's Thompson throw. He is safe at second base. He got a great jump that time. Burris, I don't think, expected Barry Bonnell to take off. That was okay. Oh, they've got a man in scoring position with two ways. Top shut down Brian Esselstein at the first inning to retire the side when he was trying to steal. Now Ray into the stretch. Misses outside with a fastball. Ball one and strike one. Rocket started tonight hitting 102. He's now at 0.98. Right-handed. Dips the knees, bends the knees rather. Half swing and a little half foul. Down to Pete Ward, looking at first base. few pounds over the years, but then haven't we all? Pete looks like he could still swing that bat with authority. Oh, he had some home run power. You go on, runner at second, 3-1 at Ryder. Bottom of the six. Ray's delivery. High and tight, 2-2. Two two. Push the kid down to his knees. Rocket is one of five Atlanta starters tonight. At the age of 24, five of them, 24 years of age. Here's the pitch. Right out fastball, cocks at the end of the side, but apparently it missed. Round the knees in too close. So now with two out and a runner at second base, it's ball three, strike two. Cuts down by a pair. Ray checks the runner at second, 3 2 pitch. Slaps the ground ball out of her three left. He has it. Straightens up, takes over to Kingman and that retires the side. Gain speeds on him and had him way off balance. And he took a cut at that one. No runs, one in. One man left in the bases and at the end of six full innings of play in Atlanta, it is still the Braves. Three, the Cubs won. Addison. Darrell Chaney has come in now to play third base as we move into the seventh inning. And Kenny will hit in the ninth spot of the batting order. That means he'll be leading off when the Atlanta comes to bat at the end of this inning. And the new pitchers, right-hander Dennis Camp, has been throwing down to their bullpen for quite a while. And he'll be replacing Bonnell in the batting order. Top of the seventh, Hector Cruz. Over, leading off. The fifth inning steps in. Speaking of homers, George Foster got his fourth of the year tonight for Cincinnati, and Dave Concepcion got his first. Here is the swing of it. Reds. Out in front of the bench tonight. Both those shots reportedly came at the bases empty to wind up the pitch. Takes the strike. Ball one, strike two on Hector. Camp of the windup. Low and outside. That level good is two and two. Camp has appeared in seven games. And hit brother hard. 13 hits off of him at nine and a third innings. Right hander delivers a swing and a tap foul. He changed on him. About to pass Venus Lowry. Given up four earned runs. Nine and a third inning. Walked only one, struck out two. Bill really has been doing a pretty good job for him. He went six innings tonight. There is a fastball that misses inside. Full count on Hector. Camp with no one and lost record. There's a swing and a well hit drive going down into the left field corner. It is over the wall. Hector Cruz, who was sprinting down at first, now breaks into his second home run squad of the night. It is now a one run ball game. Atlanta three to cut two. Barely got that one over that low fence right down near the foul pole at the 330 foot mark. Back 
back-to-back homers by Hector. Was really broken out of his club here tonight. Dave Raider, with a right-hander on the hill, will now back for Larry Cox. The first homer yielded by a camp this year. Throws allowed. Got it for both cup runs. Throws the curve that's in front of the plate for ball one today. Stepped in a 268 hitter for the year. Five runs batted in. Seven pennies. Don Nolan has gone out to check sides with his new pitcher. Now he's back behind the plate. Dave scores away in the batter's box, levels the bat. Camp wind, here's the pitch. This is down too low. Ball two. Nobody on, nobody out. Cruz with a pair of homers tonight. First in a cut uniform. Take the pitch. Take the ball in too close. Ball three. Strike Eddie Salomon. Now called Buddy Solomon in their bullpen. He's given name, he says. Here's the pitch. You know, for ball four, the Cubs have a tying run out at first with nobody out. Ray Burris walking into the batter's spot. Up and down to Phoenix Flowers. Hit the sacrifice sign.
shoulder injuries went to the last half of the season last year that sidelined him. 3-2 pitch. First at first. Swing and a bouncing foul over in the third base side. Dodgers jumped out front out of St. Louis tonight with three in the first inning on Bob Porsche who's had problems since his no-hitter. They lead three to nothing. St. Uh, Louis uh, Porsche going against Rick Roden who's 2-0 for the Dodgers. 3-2 pitch. Swung on, he hits the ground ball to the third baseman, takes it out. Cheney's throw to second for one. First goes sliding in, and they do not get the double play. Cheney had a little prop problem digging that hard bouncer out of his midsection. Burris went sliding in hard, and he is slow getting up. Cookie Rojas, Dina Trowey, and the trainer Augustine all going out to check the cup pitcher. And I uh, hope that he has suffered any serious injury out there. Might be an ankle, I don't know. Let me tell you, Cox's defensive move with Cheney there really helped because he made a very fine play on that ground ball off of the Aces bat. I thought it might get off of his chest for a uh, base hit. Played it right in front of him. They're still checking Ray Burris. And let me remind you fans about the good policy that they have at Wrigley Field this year, headed up by our old friend of ours, the 512 home run kid, Mr. Ernie Banks. Ernie and his staff and group sales will handle all the details for your group for a really fun-filled day out of Wrigley Field. It'll be an opportunity to catch some good cup action. If you know at least 20 people who enjoy fresh air, sunshine, and great baseball excitement, just call EP71919. Let Ernie and the crew help you plan a great party without any fuss on your part at EP71919. Message furnished by the Chicago Cubs. And the Franks now leading the delegation of Cubs who are going to leave the field. First, walking under his own steam. And we have a little bit of a delay here in the action. Be a good time for stations to come in and identify themselves. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs baseball network. This is WGN Radio Chicago. Young Rick Camp, Greg Gross is now going to pinch hit for Gene Klein. Left-hander hitting 300 for the year with nine hits including a double, and Gross has batted in five runs. Greg Gross batting for Klein. Now left-hander has been throwing in the Atlanta bullpen. So Cox is going out there, and he's going to bring him in right now. As Helen made the move. Cox San Diego and Philadelphia scored us after five tonight. Pittsburgh leading the Giants three to two at the end of four. Montreal four, Houston nothing after two and a half. Yankees two, Minnesota nothing. Milwaukee five, Kansas City nothing in the bottom of the second. Boston, Texas scored us in the bottom of the third. White Sox took an early one to nothing lead on behalf of Steve Stone over Baltimore tonight. And before we resume action, pitcher warming up, let's take time off for this message. You know, True Value Hardware Stores want to help keep your watch from becoming a victim of assault from batteries because of the battery in your electric or electronic watch ever least it could damage your watch internally. That's why True Value Hardware Stores offer Ever Ready Watch Batteries. Ever Ready Watch Batteries are specially sealed against leakage. Their patented radial seal is the most effective seal of its kind ever developed. Ever Ready was the first battery maker to use this method of preventing battery leakage. And that just could be the reason why most of the world's leading watch companies use Ever Ready Watch Batteries. Don't let your watch become a victim of assault from leaky batteries. Get Ever Ready Watch batteries for your electric or electronic watch from participating True Value Hardware stores. Thank you, Mailer, M-A-H-L-E-R, left-hander, coming out of relief. 
Mark Rose being there to bat against you. Taylor, M-A-H-L-E-R. He is 25. It's going to be all of 26 the end of July. First pitch from the lefty. Gross takes it inside for ball one. Taylor's native of San Antonio, Texas. by Greg. He finds one down the left field line into the fixing carrier. Pat Rocket was playing a shortstop for him. Remembers him well because these two fellows, Mailer and Rocket, played against one another down in San Antonio in high school. Here's a look at first and the pick. Close play. Drive into center field, a base hit. Here's the Jesus coming around second and putting on the brakes as Office wheels the throw into third. Greg Rose, lining a single off the left-hander. And the Cubs have the tying run in scoring position. And Greg represents the go-ahead run here in the bottom of the or top of the seventh inning at Atlanta with two away. Bobby Mercer eventually credited with a double. But he let off the sixth inning, stepped in. Bickley is one for three tonight. Taylor's pick. Bobby takes it in too close. Ball one. Big first baseman, Murphy, just in front of the outfield grass, that right side of the infield. Royster just hit it well over on the right side, and Rocket, the shortstop. Shaded well over towards second to stretch the pitch. Goes a breaking ball and it's in too close. Ball two. No strike. They sit here to tie it up. And if they really got a hold of one as he did in Philadelphia the other night, the Cubs could be propelled into the lead. It is three to two. Two runs on Hector Cruz's two home runs tonight. The look at second by the left-hander. Here's the pitch. Mercer checks and it's a strike. Strike one. Runners at first and second. Two gone. Three to two with Lada. Jesu. Tying run at second. Gross. Go ahead, run at first. Bobby of wide stance to pitch. Swung on. Bounces one foul. Even past the big first baseman, Dale Murphy. Back into second after that foul ball. Greg Lee, number 21, standing on at first. And their bullpen continues to be busy. Right. Got his Solomon throwing down there, and I got to remember that he wants to be called Buddy Solomon. Nicky Miller on the hill. Looks at second. Misses inside. behind the plate. Now the runners will be off. Two gone. Ball three, strike two. Royce is back deeper now. Second base, he's on the grass. Taylor checks the runner to Jesus. Here's the pitch. The runners go, and it's ball four outside. The bases are loaded in Atlanta for Dave Kingman. Second, and that may be all for Miller. Buddy Jay used to be called Eddie Solomon, trotting in from their bullpen for their second pitching uh, change since the inning started. And he is their fourth pitcher of the ball game. Big right hander. We have another delay in Atlanta with the score Atlanta three, the Cubs two. Bill Buckner is going to pinch hit for Dave Kingman. Buckner, of course, has been out of action as a starter in the ball club ever since the series in New York when he injured his ankles, running out of double. 
did notice tonight, Lou, he was working out a little bit at first base prior to the ball game. He seemed to be moving a little bit better than he has been. He has 10 hits for the year in 24 at bat. Two of those hits are doubles. Luck with one homer. That's what a ball game over at Pittsburgh. Driven in a pair of runs. Batting average for him, 417. So Kingman left it for a pinch hitter. As Herman Frank goes with the lefty-righty strategy. Solomon spent a brief period of time at the Chicago Cubs. He started his major league career in the Dodger organization, then was at St. Louis. Give the name, Buddy J, and that's the way he'd like to be called, and that's the way it'll be. He's going to have a conference with his catcher on the sign before they face number 22 of the Cubs. And all he's doing is coming into a situation here with the bases loaded and two gone. And Lattis nursing a one-run lead. Salomon was four in here in the state of Georgia. It's very 6'3", 190. Liz's in Atlanta now. They got him from the Cardinal organization in exchange for Mike Beard just about a year ago. Fires the first pitch and Buck takes a strike. Fits well for him in seven games in relief. Has one save. The charge to a loss. No wins. An earned run average of 1.38. Donovan Wine. Bases jam. Buckner takes the strike. A good pass ball from this big right hander. Some emotional problems when he was with the Cubs three four seasons to go. A strong arm. Out in front, O2 pitch. Butcher spots it foul. Down around his knees, but he couldn't take a chance with a call by the plate umpire. So it is still nothing in two. De Jesus, Gross, and Mercer on the bases for the Cubs with two gone in the top of the seventh. Solomon Wines, here's the pitch. Buckner swats one down the left field foul line. It is out of play. Again, protecting that plate. The two Cub homers. Up the bat, a Hedger Cruz tonight. Leading off the fifth, leading off the seventh. The only runs the Cubs have been able to get so far. They have out hit Atlanta here tonight, eight to six. The baseball being given out here by Jerry Dale to Solomon. Later, faced two men, gave up a single, did good job to Greg Gross, and walked Mercer to load him up. Now Solomon in, working on pinch hitter Bill Buckner. And he's out in front of him, 0 2. Big butt of wine, here's the pitch. Very high. Really wasted. Ball one, strike two. Buckner stands straight away against him. We'll go with the pitch. Solomon taking plenty of time. Now the big right hander is ready. Starts the wind up. Here's the pitch. Goes after one around the letters and fouls it back into the seats behind the plate. It is still ball one, strike two. Base is jammed with cuts. And again, Nolan going out to talk to his battery man. He's coming back behind the plate. Meanwhile, Pittsburgh still leading the giant. Three to two, bottom of the fifth at Pittsburgh. Pirates a very hot ball for Trying to extend their winning streak. Nolan giving his sign. Solomon looking almost casual out there in the hill. Flashes a third. Big fella starts the windup. One, two, pitch. Swung out. A fastball. Fouled. That's out of play. Way back in the third base side. And Buckner battling. Mr. Solomon. Both one-time property of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now, a bonus here at Atlanta. Key situation in the ball game, but the base is jammed and two away. Donovan is ready. He delivers. 
Playing in a foul, back up into the net behind the plate, and a fastball just around the knees. Buckner doing a good job protecting the plate. Fouled out several pitches. Bucket stepped out for a moment. Now plants himself back in. Comes the bat in the plate. Solomon still looking almost absolutely unconcerned. Wine delivers. Throws a curve. Into the dirt. Gets away. The Hanks comes up the line with score. This ball game is tied. Three to three. On a curve. Into the dirt. But not be blocked by Nolan.
the seventh inning. At first, his shortest stint this year. Last Sunday, seven and a third inning. That's the ball game in which Joe Wallace, one of the heroes, along with Rick Rose, and Wallace drove in the winning run, you'll recall, with his fourth hit of the day, and it came in the twelfth inning. Ray had been gone by then, of course, so he had no decision. So this will be like his outing last Sunday, seven and a third innings, because Herman Franks is now out there on the hill, looking down into the bullpen, selecting the right he's throwing, and he wants to keep this ball game right where it is, locked up at three and three. Getting highlights for the Cubs so far tonight. Two home runs off the bat of Hector Cruz. His first two in a Cub uniform. Herman's still waiting. Now Jerry Dale says, well, come on, Herman. He says, that not if you got to have one of those guys ready. He says, we got to get this thing going. Herman says, when I get the sign from my pitching coach, I will. And he just now gets the sign. Another pitching change in Atlanta and another delay in the action, and we've got ourselves a honey of a ball game. It's been all that well played. Harris, while the Jewish played a prominent role in it so far. Lyle wait. the young left-hander, one of your nannies, to come in from the bullpen. Let's take time out for this message. A veteran right-hander, Speedo Gaston. Seven now is a pinch hitter by skipper Billy Cox. Gaston uh, played in last night's ball game. Cedo, of course, was with San Diego when they got into the league a few years ago. He is 0 for 3 as a pinch hitter this year. And for the season, he's been at bat 30 times. Has three base hits. Just with an average of 100 rather than 0. He's been playing a lot, of course, because Gary Matthews suffered that shoulder separation. He dove and made a catch against the Dodgers out there, and he came down on his left shoulder, and it was the other shoulder that he separated, not the one with which he hit the turf the first base. Royster. Nine stolen bases this year. They say he has not yet been thrown out trying to field second. He has been picked off for space. But he can move. Here's the pitch. Gaston, yes, the veteran, takes a ball outside. Well, he got the win. Sunday at Ripley Field. He worked two innings against the match. Gave up a hit. Struck out one. No run. Might have been tagged with a loss had it not been for Greg Grosser's great defensive play in the 11th inning. There's a swing and a foul ball. Back out of play. This for Willie. His seventh appearance of the season. Given up one run so far. Pitching superbly. Looks at first. Still looking. Decides to make a peg over there, and he does. An important man, Royster, on his first base. And he can fly. In the third inning, they got two of their runs. Gifted by the Cubs was one of them. Now, when they into the stretch, and again a throw to first base. Rush was back standing. Sandy's picked up a couple of wins this year. What it brings me feel to recall with Murray Fitner at a home run in the ninth inning. Instead of all of us home happy. One out, one one delivery. Big down, but not going. Go back to first base by Dave Ritter. Royster back in time. He's taking two or three quick little steps until we were going to go to second. Dito is tall, right-handed hitting veteran. Hernandez ready. Steps up the pitching rubber. Rusher doesn't even bother to move back towards first base. Hands on his knees. 
Now he decides he will. As will he back up on the rubber? Ball tucked behind his back. Setting. Now has he signed. Goes into the stretch. Ball two. Strike one six coming up. Here it is. Gaston swings on a curve away. And he fouls the ball. Weakly back to the backstop. Ball two. Strike one. Well, he has now worked eight and two-thirds innings. Those first seven outings. Seven hits. One run. That was a homer. Struck out five and walked five. Runner goes. Gaston swings. Misses. Later had to wait above it. Cocked the arm. Couldn't get rid of it. He couldn't get the ball out of his mitt. And so Royster is on with his kennel. Go to the base of the air. And Atlanta has the go-ahead run in scoring position for Jeff Burroughs with two away. Well, that little guy winds up hitting 270 or better this year. He's got to wind up with about 55 or 60 stolen bases. He can move. Yes, he gets a quick jump, but he accelerates very quickly. Well, here is Burrow. I'm sorry, Applestein. That Burrow's in my mind. Let's have him lead off the next inning. Applestein. Driven in a run tonight. There's a swing, and he hits one down to Buckner. Waves the pitcher away. And it's an unassisted foot out for Buckner at first base as Applestein wasted no time going after the first pitch. No run. One hit. Runner stranded in scoring position. So as the Cubs come to bat. Here in the eighth inning, it is still tied 3-3. Three to three. Tito Gaston will stay in the ball game. Billy Cox doesn't want to lose his bat. He'll be in right field. And Brian Applestein moves from right field to center to Roland Office is out of there. Buddy J. Solomon. He used to be called Eddie Solomon. Came on in the seventh inning and uncorked a wild pitch that permitted Ivan De Jesus to come up the line and score the tying run of the ball game. Then he got Bill Buckner. The liner to left field to retire the side will face out of Arrows. Trio Cruz first pitch. Out of Arrows now batting lefty. Looks at a fastball for a strike. Steve Holt for two tonight has reached once in a walk. Donovan winds to right enters. Next pitch swung out. He hit him right of the fist and he hits it down to the first baseman coming up with a dispensary for another assisted foot out. A pause for station identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs baseball message. This is WGN Radio Chicago. Two away. And here's the home run slugger of the night, Mr. Hector Cruz. Went high and deep, leading off the fifth inning. And then off Rick Camp, who came on to start the seventh. He curved one barely over the left field wall, right over the 330-foot marker. But he has come out of his slump with a vengeance. First pitch by Solomon. There were both members of the Cardinal organization at one time, and that's the ball rolling away to the right-hander. Solomon's wind up. It's a swing and a tap foul. He's going to change speeds on him. Tapped it weakly over to the third base side. What do you understand the scorer's department right now, Luke? Well, the Dodgers still leads the Cardinals three to one. Cardinals batting in the fifth inning. Montreal six, Houston one. Wow. Into in the four and a half. Hmm. He's a pitch. Long on a miss. Good fastball. And Martin for the Phillies has just hit his second home run of the year with two man on after Winfield and Hendricks have given San Diego a two to nothing lead. But with that home run by Martin, Phillies three, San Diego two at the end of six. And here with two out, bases empty. Wind up in the one-two pitch. Cruz goes his bat at Evan and he hits a high foul back out of play. Cincinnati leads New York four to one at the end of five. That takes care of the National League. White Sox one, Baltimore nothing at the end of three. Yankees two, Minnesota one at the end of three and a half. Milwaukee five, Kansas City one at the end of four. Solomon six, Cruz swings and a hard one hopper off the chest of Bell Penny. The third baseman can't pick it up and Cruz is going to be on. That almost was in hard enough to put a hole in there. And Hector Cruz is going to be credited with his third straight hit. He 
gets in the groove but that bat of his is stays there it'll help us attack from yes it, yes indeed if he gets into a, a hitting streak it'll give us a little extra power where we haven't been getting it we haven't been getting much power from any place here's dave raider came in as a pinch hitter in the seventh inning and drew a base on ball then was forced at second he looks and there is a strike right at the knees to Raider. So he's still hitting 268. Solomon into the stretch. Here's the pitch. Too low. That makes the count. Ball one, strike one. Well, Dave, how about your first home run of the Cubs uniform, huh? Cruz, of course, teammates last year with the Cardinals. That Cruz at first for the Cubs. There's a curve swung out, and he almost broke his bat as he fouled it. His back, rather, as he fouled at it. The Los Angeles Dodgers be at Wrigley Field Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. Remember, a bunch of division teams like the Dodgers and the Giants who follow men come to Chicago only twice throughout the year. Here's the pitch. Later swing. High chopper to the second baseman. Almost hit the runner. Picked up over there by Royster. And the bank retires Raider in the Cubs in the eighth inning without a run. No runs, one hit. We've left at least one man on in every inning except the third. And have left a total of eight men stranded as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning in Atlanta. Still tied. Three to three. Here in the bottom of the eighth inning, and Jeff Burroughs, one of the most dangerous hitters in baseball, is to lead off against Willie Hernandez. He drove in a run with a sacrifice fly in the first inning. He walked in the third. In the fifth inning, Ray Burris did a super job with two off runners at first and second. He got Burroughs to bounce back to Ray on the hill. And that retired the side. So officially tonight he is 0 for 1, which means now that he has only 10 hits in his last 12 trips to the plate. That's right. Started the night leading the National League in hitting.
change it here after uh, Willie had two strikes on him. That's right. And a solid line drive. That's their first hit off Fernandez. And he represents the go-ahead run. Joe Nolan, the catcher, is going to bunt. And he pushes one out to the mound, picked up by Hernandez. Throws to second base. And Burroughs is forced to second. Willie coming off the mound in a hurry. He kind of majored that throw, and then he fired a good fastball into De Jesus. One away. Now the big rookie, Dale Murphy. What does Billy Cox have to say about this kid to you before the game? Well, he liked this kid. He said he can use him as first base or a catcher. And he's been hitting the ball well. He says he's, he's got a great future in front of him. He just turned 22. Herman now, apparently he's going to make a couple of changes. To Frank, standing there aside the third base foul line, played up by Gary Dale, says, now this is what I want to do. He has Suter throwing in the bullpen. Suter, of course, was absolutely fantastic against the Phillies the other night, I believe, when he faced six men and struck out five of them. I think he faced seven. He gave up a single. But he struck out five out of the six out that he posted as he got the save and the Cubs left Philadelphia with a victory. So Suter is coming on here in the eighth inning with the score tied. If Atlanta three, the Cubs three will be back after this message. Suter has never given up an earned run to the Philadelphia Phillies. It's coming to the Cubs. This is his, well, he had full year last year, part of the season before that. Now this year. See what he can do with these Atlanta plays. Well, he has three saves. He has absorbed two losses this year. His first seven outings. Nine innings, nine hits, three earned runs. And the first pitch swung out of miss by this rookie, Dale Murphy. Those long legs of his and long arms. Looked like he was halfway down the first base trying to reach that shooter. Special it dips down abruptly. I'm sure this kid never saw anything like it in the minor. Only 22. Steps out a moment, takes a practice cut. Tom Burgess is coached at third. Burgess has hit one. Go to first. Joe Nolan, the runner over there, back safely. Should they like to keep him close? Hopefully, try to get a double play ball off the bat of this rookie. Bruce into the stretch, delivers. This is outside. Murphy, tonight against Ray, struck out, fouled out to the first baseman, flied out to the right fielder, Mercer. The batting average has now dipped to 175, and he's got to be pressing a little bit. Shooter is ready with a runner on his first, tied up the three, there's a swing and a miss. Came upstairs a little bit with that flip finger curveball, and it exploded. We'll be here tomorrow night and Sunday afternoon. One gone. And a count of ball one, strike two. Pitcher is due up next. Here's the pitch. Swung out of it. And he disgustedly throws his bat after striking out of that slip finger curve down and away. Leaves the bat almost out of the pitcher's mouth. I wonder what's going through his mind when he sees that Suter pitch for the first time. I'll tell you, the way he's won at that pitch, from here on in, he don't want to see any of Suter. Bob Beal, B-E-A-L-L, been around for a while, but that last year in the minors, is coming off the bench to pinch hit. He's not exactly a kid. Where are the eighth inning? Beal is a switch hitter. There's a pinch batter for Billy Cox the Braves so far this year. Has a run batted in, but officially he's 0 for 8. D-E-A-L-L. Bob Beal. A potential go-ahead run still on at first base. Mercer coming well over to the right field line for this left-handed hitter. Bill Wallace out to center field. Playing a deep right center. I may have overlooked mentioning that he came in when Sutter came on. Well, it's a bad night. Drew 
Cubs with a pair of home runs for the Cubs tonight. Out of the lineup now. Here's the pitch by Bruce. Too low. Bill wouldn't chase it. Bill was not on the Major League roster for Atlanta this spring. Put a good year at Portland last year in the minors. Quick hitter choking up in the bat a little bit. Here's the pitch to him. Swung on. Took a vicious cut. All he could do is get a piece of it and bounce it back foul. So with two out here in the bottom of the eighth. The Cubs three, Atlanta three. The count on the batter, ball one, strike two. Veteran Bill Negro does the show here tomorrow evening. He had lost his first four decisions and beats that a victory his last time out. And he goes against Woody Fryman, who was looking for his first win for the Cubs. Go to first, run it back at all fours. Deep Ward is like a whole bunch of homers for the Sox. Coaching at first base. There's a pitch swung on a tap foul. Back out of play. For the early and mid 60s. There's a demon down there comes outside of that bat, Mr. Ward was. Suter trying to close the door on the Braves here in the eighth inning. For the Cubs, Joe Wallace is slated to lead off the ninth and then the top of the batting order. One two delivery on its way. Kicks, he's swaying, and that one dipped too low, and he wouldn't go after it. Ball two, strike two, with two out. Shooter climbing back up on the hill. Temperature here today got up in the 70s, cooled off a little bit tonight, but it's still one of the most pleasant nights for baseball we can have. Of course, they get up in the 80s here tomorrow. 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung out of it, strike three, he got it. Throwing that knuckle curve, or split finger fastball, whatever you want to call it, but it really exploded. It struck out five fillies the other night. Now his last eight outs that he has posted, he has fanned seven. That's why he's in the groove. No runs, one hit. One man left. Now we go to the ninth. Struck out seven. I just uh, make that announcement to the press box here that I just gave you. He's banned seven out of the last eight batters in space. Well, we're going into the ninth inning, and it's all tied up. Three to three. Dave Campbell. Nick Dave is a chopper. Is their fifth pitcher of the night. Gil Wallace to lead off against him. Right now, hitting 438 with seven hits for the year and only 16 at bats. Go run around last Sunday to win the ball game at Ripley Field against the Mets. The left hander, he's batting 455 and he's batting lefty right now against Campbell. There's no one or loss record. He's only worked six in the third innings and given up five hits. Fastball inside, ball one. and a foul back out of play. Campbell worked against the Giants in relief here last night. On oh, a fastball that on occasion was really rising. Comes from Princeton, Indiana. Was that a punch to some of you fans listening? You will be there. Uh, the Hoosiers. Be proud of it. Right handed delivers. There's that fastball and it did rise, but it went too high. Ball one, strike one. Campbell graduated from Oakland City, Indiana, from Wood Memorial High. Wines and Evers. Wallace takes inside at the knees. Ball three, strike one. After he was passed over in the free agent draft, Campbell was signed after he was included in a workout that he hadn't been scheduled for originally. There's his swing and a fly ball to the left fielder, Burroughs. That moves to his right, he hauls it in, there's one away. Kids don't give up. Ninth inning, the Jesus stepping in. Scored eventually, went with the bases loaded, Eddie Solomon came out of relief. Working on Bucker, and he uncorked a wild pitch. That tied up the ball game. Yvonne 
Swings and he fouls it sharply back out of play. Run singled in the first inning. Shot off the third baseman in the fifth. So officially denied. The cut shortstop is two for four, and he carries a 3-11 batting average at the moment. Here's the pitch to it. Swung on and a high fly ball. Should be hauled in. Second baseman out. Right fielder Gaston comes on. Cito calls for it and makes the catch easily. Two away. Now, Greg Rose, who came in as a pinch hitter in the seventh inning, faced a left-hander. Next fader, and he singled off of it. With two away. And Mercer drew a walk to load him up. A wild pitch. Reduced the tying run in the ball game, and we're tied here at 3-3. Three three. Campbell's first pitch, a breaking ball to Greg, and the left-hander takes it inside, ball one. baseball program that is a strike call. One or two at Purdue and Indiana University. Remember this kid? A scholarship offers for both of them. Gross slapped that pitch foul. Back into the back shot. Purdue recruited Campbell as a catcher. Indiana recruited him as a pitcher. So where did he go to school? East Tennessee State. Man, basketball, football, baseball. What do you think? Gross swings and a drive into left center field. Burroughs in the mid run. He is there and he makes the one headed kick. Bobby Gross to the base hit. Campbell puts the Cubs down 1 2 3 here in the ninth inning. Look out. Bottom of the ninth for the Atlanta Braves. The Cubs, three runs, nine hits. Atlanta, three runs, eight hits. Rocket is to lead off against Bruce Sutter. Daryl Cheney is to follow him, and then the leadoff hitter, Gary Royster. Then he came on to play third base in the seventh inning, hitting in the number nine spot. Rocket, a right hander, 0 for 3 so far, big swing and a tap foul. Over the third base side here, the Cup dugout. With a new baseball, walks off into the grass in the far side of the mound. Goes with the pitching hand, climbs back up the hill to get his sign from Raider. Bench to the waist is ready, starts the lineup. Here's the pitch. Five to Buck. He missed it. Fouled it back. Well, he looked like he was way out in front of the plate on that one. Nothing and two. his front foot, that left one, way out, he said put her more in front of the plate anyway, takes the swing on that one, and he lines a vicious foul into the seats right over the cup dugout, strike two count, young Pat Rocket, very slick club man, here's the pitch, to hold up and he swung on that slip finger curve that was low and away. Raider had the ball bounce into the dirt. As for the appeal, but John McSherry, the big umpire at first base, is rocket held up in time with that bat. So the count remains. Ball one, strike two one. Now the wind up by Bruce. And that time he went around, the ball into the dirt. Raider picks it up, steps in front of the plate, and throws to Buckner at first base. And that is the third straight strikeout by Sutter. Raider in assist. Buckner to put out on it. There's Darrell Taney, the switch hitting veteran. Straightaway stand for Darrell, and he looks at the ball a little bit low. Steve Stone, pitching a shutout against Baltimore through six innings tonight in Chicago, trying to go ahead of the lead. Steve, one and one. Wind up in the 1 0 pitch. Quick swing and a miss. He's got it working. Keep it that way. Darrell down 
30 years of age. Hugh Dow, he's from Hammond, Indiana, and he was an outstanding athlete there, including football. The pinch hit homer this year is a right-handed batter. 1-1 one, one pitch, first run in his career. On that side of the plate, looks at that pitch low, ball two, strike one. Only homer so far this year, and he's now batting lefty, of course, against Bruce, and there's a swing and a miss.
Versa trying to get on base. Campbell, the fifth grade pitcher in the windup. Three and one pitch. Strike call over the outside corner. Three and two on Mercer. Campbell, a tall right-hander. Gets his sign from Nolan. Mercer steps out of the batter's box for just a minute. Now he steps. Here's the pitch. back into the upper deck. So Mercer gets another shot. Yes, and deep and right. Ashley Kine, the center field. Campbell gets his sign from Nolan. Here's the three and two pitch. Hinch, oh, he's going out on strike. Mercer couldn't believe the call. He's still in the batter's spot. Thought the pitch was going to be inside. They just tip the corner and Dale calls it out. First strikeout for Campbell. Now here's Buckner at that. Dale Buckner pinch hit for Schoolman in the seventh inning. And the base is loaded. And then Solomon uncorked a wild pitch to score the tying run. Then Buckner lined out to Burrow. He takes the first pitch for a strike. Campbell with an up and overhand fastball. Another one for a strike. And then he uses that full motion to let up on that baseball. But he throws it from the same position that he throws his fastball. Now it's 0 2. The pitch out of play. Swing and a line drive over the first base of Tim. Base hit. In the right field. Buckner lifts as he jogs down the first base. But there is the cup tipped into this ball game. With one out, Hanta Ferris, the hitter. Twice this evening with a count of 0 2, Cub hitters have the base hit on that third pitch. Here's Hanta Ferris looking for his first hit of the evening. He's 0 for 3. One walk. He takes a strike over the outside corner. Campbell just wearing back and firing stars. Strike. Hi, fastball, one and one to count. One out. We're in the tenth inning. Bucks it on first. In the bottom of this inning, it'll be Gaston, Asselkarin, and then Burrow. Let's see if the Cubs can move Buckner around the base path to score. Campbell gets his sign. He's into the stretch. The pitch. Swing and a pop foul out of play back in the plate. The count of one ball, two strikes. Buckner, as you know, if he thinks he can steal a base, he will try it. He's done so on many occasions. The stretch, the pitch, swing and a tap foul right at the plate. The count now, one ball, two strikes. You know that ankle of Buckner's really is painful. He'll do most anything to try to win a ball game. Go to first and Buckner has to dive back as Campbell noticed he extended his lead at first base. So perhaps Buckner had an idea of stealing second base. The stretch, the pitch, swing and a ground ball to the first baseman. Murphy has it, bobbles the ball a little bit, throws to the pitcher, and he's out at first base. Murphy wanted to make the play at second base, couldn't get the ball out of his glove, then turned, and fortunately Campbell just beat Hontaveras to first for the out. But the lead run advances the second base in the person of Buckner. Now time is called. As Bobby Cox, I think, walking out to the mound to talk to Campbell. He has a choice of pitching to trio or first. And I think first, what am I talking about? Suter. Pitchers batting in seventh spot. Or, well, three 
Julio Jr., but the manager has a choice of putting this man on and pitch to Suter. And it looks as if they're going to put him on. They waited for just a fraction of a second. There's ball one outside. They're going to put three on base. Johnny Moore loosening up in the cup bullpen. There's the ball outside and ball three. No strike. Both managers pulling every trip that they can think of as far as switching. Trying to win his ball game. There's ball four. Trio walk. And now Bittner is going to bat for Suter. Bittner has been under the weather with the flu bug last couple of days in Philadelphia. Bittner is batting 256. He has two home runs, six RBI. And now Kelleher is going to run for Buckner at second base. So Bittner, being used as a pitch hitter, will perhaps remain in the ball game to play first. So there's been a few ball players being used tonight by both managers. You could go down to your third pinch hitter on your bench and pick out a pitcher. You go pretty deep. That's exactly what Herman Franks has done tonight. He's had Gross pinch hit. He's had Buckner pinch hit. And now here's Pitner. He's had Raider pinch hit also. First pitch popped up out of play. Behind the Cubs dugout. Strike one. Cheney giving it quite an effort, but the ball landed some six or eight rows back into the stands. We're in the top of the tenth inning. We're all tied up three to three. Kelleher is at second base. Trio is at first. Bittner, pinch hitting for Suter. Two out. That's the story up to this point. And here's the strike one pitch. Strike call over the outside corner. Campbell Spreading a needle, putting that ball over that outside corner. He's 0-2 on Bittner. He was 0-2 on Buckner when he singled the right. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Far outside, he wasted it. It's 1-2. and two. Hits his sign. Kelleher with a lead at second. Trio off first. Campbell into the stretch. One and two pitch now to Bittner. He swings and pops it foul out of play. Ernie Johnson gets the biggest hand of the night. With his net, captured that foul ball off Bittner's back. That's the loudest applause of the evening. And he did leave his feet. Bittner levels the bat over the plate. The one and two pitch once again. He checks his swing in time. They ask for the appeal. Nagel says no. It's now ball two, strike two. This game three hours old right now. Cubs trying to win it in extra inning. second base, two and two, pitch out of play. Top foul as Bittner guarding that plate. Pops another one out of play. Bittner with a chance to give the Cubs the lead. If they can throw a base hit in that outfield. 
Tips back to the batter's box. Doubles it. The bat over the plate. Campbell is ready. He's set. The pitch. Swing a high fly ball down the right field line. Gaston moving over towards the line. Still moving. And he leaps and he makes the catch. What a fantastic catch. In foul territory, he leaps. And I thought McSherry called him out. But I guess he missed the ball. I'm sorry. McSherry's motion pointing up in the air. I thought he made the catch. I couldn't follow the ball. He leaped at the last moment. Pretty good breakout, you know. Yes, I thought he had it. Good thing he didn't have another one in his pocket. He'd have brought that one out. Could have been called out. So Bittner gets another chance. Young runner still at first and second. But Sherry picked me out on that particular call. Here's the stretch by Campbell. Here's the pitch by Campbell. Swing and a foul back to the screen. That's six straight pitches. That pitcher has fouled out of play. The count is two and two. Two out. Ten pitches. Once again, the two and two pitch. Swing and a line drive over the first base of ten. Base hit. In comes Keller with the lead run. There goes Trio to third. Aggressive performance by Victor at the plate, who just out battled Campbell and singled over the leaping Murphy's head at first base to give the Cubs a 4 to 3 lead here. And for Victor, that's his seventh RBI of the season. Now here's Raider at that to see what he can do. That was the Cubs 11th hit. So that's how much a bench means to a ball club. As I mentioned, when you can come in there with a fellow like Bittner, time is called now by Bittner at first base. I don't know whether he's all right or not. He said he's all right. He's going to remain in the ball game. Comes with us at first and third, one run in, and here's Raider at that. Raider takes ball, low and inside. Well, if Johnny Moore can close out the Braves in the tenth, Tudor will pick up the victory. Raider swings at the fly ball, deep to right center. Gaston going back, slackens up a little bit, and then makes the catch on the run. But in the tenth inning, on Bittner's pinch hit to right field. The Cubs score one run, two hits. They leave two men on base. We move now to the bottom of the 10th inning. Cubs four, Atlanta three. Bittner will play first base. And Johnny Moore, the new Cub pitcher. Moore will not have an easy task. He will face Gaston. Kind and Burroughs here with the Cubs holding on to a one run lead. Another grand slam over this time in Chicago, Lou, but unfortunately not for the White Sox. Baltimore's ready, Murray. A grand slam in the eighth inning after uh, Mumbry had homers with nobody on. So the Orioles now have taken the lead of 6 to 2 in the eighth. And Philadelphia, out hit by San Diego, 11 to 5. Held on for a 3-2 to two victory over the Padres tonight. Christensen, the winner over the Ojinko. That's just the reverse of what they did yeah. the other night. That's what they keep saying when you lose. Now, they'll even up eventually, but yeah. this one evened up very quickly. Sure did. For the Phillies. Cubs are out here, I believe, 13-4 to four or something like that. Yeah. When uh, Mercer Grand Slammer won the ball game for Russell, 4-2. to two. But right now... Problem at hand. Gaston. And then Asselstein. And then Burrow. Johnny Moore. Trying to save this one for Cooter. Who did another fantastic job in relief. Johnny Moore is ready. First pitch on its way to Gaston. 
High inside, ball one. We're in the 10th inning. Ball one pitch out of play. Low ball two. Luco and Roberts warming up for the Cubs in the bullpen. Two and no pitch. Swing and a one hopper right down to the third. And fires that ball across the pit there, one out. Now here's Hasseltine. Two for four tonight. Left-handed hitter. Cubs with four runs, 11 hits. Atlanta, three runs, eight hits. Each team helped the other to score. Cubs coming up with three errors in one inning. And the wild pitch by Solomon. But the Cubs tie this game up in a seventh. First pitch, ball one low. Johnny Moore pitching from behind now on the first two hitters that he has faced. But the first hitter he retired, Gaston on a ground out. There's a swing and a foul. Strike one. One and one to come. It's always nice to win the first game of a series. Sort of sets up your ball club with a little confidence. There's a let-up, a beautiful let-up for a strike call. Four. That could have been that split finger curveball that he worked on all spring. One ball, two strikes. Now the count. Four. Holds that glove in front of him. Now is ready to pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out on a fastball. Now with two outs, here's the hottest man that could be at the plate for Atlanta. Hottest man with a bat, Jeff Burrow. He has one for two tonight. He has walked, and he has shot a sacrifice fly in the first inning to Cruz, who was at center field at that time, to score the first Atlanta run. Here's the first pitch to him by Moore. Fast ball low, ball one. Cubs need one more out. Trying to get a little extra on that fastball. So now he's behind. Ball two, no strikes to Burrow. Moore looks in, gets his sign from Raider. Burrow levels that bat over the plate. Big, powerfully built, right-handed hitter. The pitch. It's a strike call. Burrow's the veteran was taking it. He thought it was going to be inside. So now the count is two and one. The two and one pitch. Fast ball and a swing and a miss. He just fired that one right past it. Two and two to come. Two out. Ten inning. Cups lead by one run. The two and two pitch on its way. Bruno swings to drive that ball to the shortstop. The Hastings knocks it down. Fires the first. Sitter makes the play. The lead is over. Cups win four and three. Jehazos knocked down that hard shot off Burrow's bat, but he flew from deep in the hole at shortstop. The ball took a short hop. Mister came up with the play to beat Burrow's by a step. What a way to end the ball game. Tenth inning for Atlanta, no runs, no hits. Nobody left on base, and the Cubs win this one four to three. Well, it's a pleasure to give you these totals. The Cubs four runs. 11 hits, 3 errors, 10 men left. The Braves, 3 runs, 8 hits, no errors, 7 men left on. Bruce Sutter gets his first win after a couple of losses. Dave Campbell, the young man from Princeton, Indiana, suffers his first defeat for the Atlanta Braves. 3 hours and 16 minutes before a face bout of 10,045 here in Atlanta. And the Cubs now have moved two games over the 500 mark. And now, candidate for the season. 
Montreal is posted, I think we are ready tonight. If we can't pick up any ground on them, we remain a half game behind the Expos who knocked off Houston. Six to three is his new left-hander, veteran Ross Finsley. Got his fourth win of the season without a loss for Montreal. Well, they get to this run, but things that I remember a little. Edgar Cruz, first two home runs in a Cub uniform. And Larry Bittner coming through with a big pinch hit shot. After it looked like the side was retired, but it looked like Cito Gaston had made a sensational one-headed catch of his foul ball up against the padding of the wall down there at right field. John McSherry gave us gave us the signal that for all the world looked like he was out. I guess John was just trying to indicate it was a foul ball, but it's a peculiar way to do it. And Bittner had a new life, wound up getting what proved to be the game-winning hit. All in all, a happy start in this series. Yes, yeah. so I'd have to see Jeff, uh, say definitely at the bench one uh, for the Cubs tonight. Bittner coming off that bench. And uh, great relief work by Suter, yep. deserving the victory. And uh, Moore never looked any quicker either than oh, tonight. Sure. He he was the ball. Ball. Uh, it sure. was a very fine victory. But uh, trailing three to nothing and coming back, still holding these plays intact so the Cubs could score a couple of runs. So uh, it was fine maneuvering by... Kipper Phillips yeah. uh, got a little sloppy in one uh, series of plays there that gave them a run. But it was a wild pitch thrown by Eddie Solomon that permitted the Cubs to tie up the ball game. So I guess those things even up. And we've got game two coming up here tomorrow evening. I'll be back in a moment with a word about it. Our broadcast tonight from Atlanta has been brought to us by Al the Pure Brood Beer from God's Country. The Association of Chicagoland McDonald's Restaurants, with the tobacco companies located in the Oak Brook Shopping Center and in Old Chicago in Bolingbrook. Prince Lloyd and Lou Boudreau here at Atlanta, Georgia for the second game of the series. And I don't know how we could have one more exciting one than we had here last night. No, it was a great ball game, one that uh, both managers threw a lot of ball players into the lineup. I think Franks used 18 and Bobby Cox used 16. Yeah, they had, their, they had to keep their wits about them last night. That proved to be a pretty good one, of course, for the Cubs with Larry Bittner coming off the bench, driving in the winning run with a single after Cito Gaston missed uh, on a foul catch out there that would have uh, taken us out of that inning. But it's another night tonight, and we've got two grizzled old veterans out there on the hill, Woody Priman going for the Cubs, still looking for his first one of the year, and Bill Negro, a better knuckleballer for the Atlanta Braves. These two fellows probably had more years in the major leagues, and a lot of these kids in the Atlanta ball club have in total age. I imagine so. I think both of them have used the rocking chair a lot more than these kids have used it. <laughs> we even thought about using it. They know how to pitch, of course. Whether or not they'll be able to get the job done tonight against the opposition remains to be seen. I'm happy to see Bill Buckner penciled back into the starting lineup for the Cubs tonight. I hope that he can stay in there now for a week or so without re-injuring himself. Do you recall when Bill had to leave the lineup he was hitting the ball well, line yeah. drives, although he's getting two or three hits a game. I hope he has regained that hitting eye. And he came off the bench last night to get himself a base hit, too, as a pinch hitter. He's an amazing performer. And he was flipping around the hotel today. Herman Franks was asking him, how you feel, Buck? And he just shook his head. He'd swear there's no way in the world he's going to be able to play ball again for a year. But he's in there tonight. Bob Cox, the manager of the Atlanta Braves, is still having a few injury problems on his ball club, but I guess everybody has to sweat that out. How about the day Mr. Pete Rose had today, huh? That's tremendous, and uh, my heart goes out for him. It's great. Uh, oh, Charlie Hustle, three home runs. He's climbing very close now to that 3,000 hit mark. Yep, that's a tremendous plateau to achieve. I think he was five for six for the day. Not too bad. And uh, the Cubs last night, we're guilty, of course, of a couple of errors on one play, but those things are going to happen. I'm anxious tonight to see the kid who's doing the catching for Phil Necro. Last night he played over at first base. He has to be one of the tallest catchers ever to perform in the majors, 22 years of age. Dale Murphy going to be behind the plate tonight. And they tell me that he may be their best catcher. Yes, Bobby Cox is very high on him, and of course, uh, with Matthews out of that lineup, he tries to get uh, Murphy at first base to put another bat in the lineup. But yep. thus far, it's been all Burroughs. They haven't had much hitting. So let's hope they don't come out of that hitting uh, slump until we leave town. That will be all right. Burroughs, of course, uh, having another good evening for him last night. A picture of intense concentration when he's in the batter's box. And I want you to concentrate right now on this. The tobacco companies 
of Oak Brook. And Oak Brook Companies, located in the Oak Brook Shopping Center, and in Old Chicago and Bowling Brook, a presentation of WGN Sports. We'll be on the air with you at 12.55 tomorrow. And don't forget to move your clock ahead at one hour tonight. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball.